Okay, today I'm making this video um, because a friend of mine by the name of Danny, and Danny, this, ha this video is actually just for you, so if anybody else sees it, <laughs> you know, I'm making this for Danny, and the reason why is he had a very good question of whether a uh, car stereo could be powered through uh, the AC power supplies that are um, in computers, and so... We went ahead, we both did the research, and, you know, found out that we could. Uh, it's not very complicated, and uh, I set this up so he, he can see, and as well as others, I guess, um, how it's done. It's also for my friend uh, JR, shout out to JR from Shot Town. Um, you know, in case uh, you're interested too, JR, to see how this is done. Okay, first with the start off, I'm, I'm just going to show you that we're using a very low wattage power supply. It's actually a, a hip row, and it's a 185 watt power supply. Now, what's important with the power supply is not so much the wires, but the the amount of amps there in the 12 volt rails. Now, power supplies for computers do convert uh, the AC um, power to DC power, and in this case, it has. Let's see, I believe it does have um, 12 volts, and it has 10 amps in that rail. So this, uh, being a 10 amp, 12 volt rail, can power a 10 volt, 12 volt radio. So um, I went ahead and hooked it up as such. First, in the back of the stereo, there's obviously the various power uh, and speaker connectors. But if you see here, I'm not sure if you can see that well, but there's a yellow and there's a black wire and also a red wire. Uh, the yellow and the red wire, in this case, this is an Alpine, uh, the yellow and the red wire are for power and continuous power for the ignition. Um, so you need to tie those together and the black one um, is a typical, it's a negative and it's a ground uh, wire. What I did was hook these red and yellow together and hook the line, uh, I did tape it together uh, after doing so, I went ahead and taped, well, I plugged the line in to the yellow part of the Molex plug. All I did was, as you can see right here, there's yellow and black. I took the yellow and red tape them together there, ran a wire from that that I also connected together, ran it and pushed it in to the yellow part of this Molex uh, uh, adapter. Um, the ground, I ran the ground into the other line, which is black, and you can take either of the blacks because they're both ground. Anyways, I went ahead and did the same thing, pushed them both in, and taped it to it. Now, there's a very generic way to do this, of course, but I, I just wanted to see if, um, you know, it would power up. So I went ahead and pushed them in, made sure there was no uh, wires outside, pushed them in, and taped them over. Okay, in addition, I went ahead and hooked up the speakers. Now these speakers, they're 100 watt speakers and they're home stereo speakers. Now these um, are running at eight ohms and typical car stereo speakers run at four. So running at eight, ohm, eight ohms, it draws more power. So I just wanna show you that this 185 watt power supply, because I've been seeing online that people have been getting really large power supplies to do this with. But with 185 watt power supply, 12 volts with a 10 amp rail can power the, the amp, which has a 40 by 4 watt uh, rating. And we're powering 200 watt speakers uh, with 8 ohms. Now, I didn't have a power switch. I was looking everywhere for one just to have one just to show. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and plug it in. Now, this, this uh, stereo, the LCD reading stopped working. And, and that's why I had actually changed it out of my car. So this, you won't see this power up. Uh, but if this was, you know, a regular working stereo, um, that would turn on. So I'm going to go ahead and power it up. As you can see, the fan is on. We have the power that goes through. I'm going to give it a little bit. It did power up. Turn it on. As you can see, I did a makeshift also an antenna. Just regular aluminum foam plugged into where the antenna goes on the stereo. And... You see we've got sound. Let me actually see if I can find the station. You'll dry them, it'll take a few months. 
then what? Yeah. There you then go. We're going to make a table. The stereo we're powering gonna, up. Yeah. Um, absolutely. 185 I mean, watt power supply, and we have from the first uh, both speakers powering up. As you can see, low volume. To what the planks are telling you what to do with them, really. It's very I just clear. want to keep an uninterrupted And you probably can't hear me that well at this point. But it's very loud in here. And that, all we're doing is running those two speakers. And they're very clear. Eight ohms at 100 watts going into the car stereo out of 185 watt power supply. 12 volts with a 10 amp rail. And it's powering perfectly. Now, if I was to supply an additional amplifier, I would go ahead and get another. Uh, power supply and power that separately. I've seen other people hook power supplies together, but uh, that's too much of a variable. I think just by hooking up one separate power supply to it should do the trick. And I'll probably make another video showing that how that's done. But as you can see, it's not very complicated. A lot of people splice into the wires. I mean, if you want to, you can do that, but it's not actually necessary. Uh, this isn't the neatest way to do it, but as you can see, it's a good way to test if radios are working, if somebody wants to sell you a stereo or something. Um, you can see it's not very complicated. Um, also, for the power supply itself, in order for it to get the turn on, since it's an ATX power supply, this is the 20 pin connector that goes um, to the motherboard. Um, if you look, um, I shorted um, two connectors together, and it was basically the green, the green lead to any of the black ones. I just chose the one that's right next to it. So on this, it would be three and four. Um, if it was this way or upside down, I don't know what number that would be. But I just stuck a wire in one side and then threw it to the other side. Of course, it was stripped. And as you can see, it just pushed in. That gives us the ability to put the power plug into the uh, power supply and for it to go ahead and power up automatically. Now, we're running this. The power supply is very cool. The stereo, it's also very cool. Nothing's overheating. I wouldn't have a problem with running this all day and all night. Um, if I had an amp running into it as well I, with a separate power supply, I wouldn't have a problem with that either. Um, the computer power supplies are made to handle large loads and can run for, um, I think, seven years straight while on continuously. So um, they've got a fan built in too, which is very good. So um, again, Danny, this is how to do it. Again, we short the power supply right here on three and four which is green wire to any other black uh, wire here, which is negative. Get it to power on. Yellow, any yellow on these, um, on these uh, Molex uh, connectors also. The yellow is 12 volts, while the red is 5. So uh, we're not using the 5 in this case, so we're just paying attention to the yellow, and you can use any one of them as long as it's yellow, not the, the main power that goes to the motherboard. So any of the yellows, plug it in, uh, ground it with the black. Same thing over here, except in addition to the yellow, you're adding the red to it. And, you know, voila. We've got a car stereo at home. Okay, I hope this helps, Danny. I'm going to be sending you this power supply already done. So if I have a power switch, I'll add that to it so we can just click it on and off. But other than that, you know, it's just uh, plugging in or uh, unplugging it. should work fine. Okay? Hope to tell. Talk to you soon, buddy. And came across a slideshow. All right. What do you think, Danny? I mean, maybe not be your favorite song, but probably blowing out the sound on the mic. But sounds really good over here.